Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we continue to listen to your word as you lead us to come to a new way of understanding, a new way of believing, a new way of learning who you are by looking at the words that you lead us to see from a whole new way as you do every single year. And so lead us to be open to what it is you are teaching us this year and what it is you are leading us to understand this year as we grow more and more deeper in our understanding of who you are, who we are, and where you are leading us. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. I should mention to you, I don't know if you can pick pick it up, but I do have a form of asthma, which doesn't bother me at all, even though it's one of those things people will say, do you have your inhaler with you? Uh, I guess I do, but I've never had to use it in an emergency situation, but you may be able to hear me wheezing. And uh, it's coming, it's coming across, and I'm just picking up on it because I got my headphones on, and I'm picking up uh, up on it pretty, pretty deeply. But anyway, it's there. I'm fine, uh, but it, it seems to be there anyway. So, <laughs> um, but w- we're looking at today's readings, and our first reading again comes to us from the Old Testament, and it comes to us from uh, Ezekiel. Now, of course, yesterday we heard from uh, 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 Isaiah, sorry, we heard from Isaiah. So we're hearing from Ezekiel today, and this is the famous reading where there was water flowing out of the temple, and in it flowing out, it brings great fruitfulness everywhere it goes. There's something you have to understand about that. And we have to go back to that time to kind of think of that. Now, when I was in the seminary, there's a program that one of the priests here in the archdiocese runs called Rostro de Cristo, which is face of Christ, and it takes place in Ecuador, in a place, I don't know if it's still still there, I'm, I'm sure it is, in a place outside of Guayaquil, which is one of the two major cities in Ecuador, and uh, it's the one that's actually near the river. And it's ironic, it's near the Daule River. It's ironic because the people live uh, in great poverty and they have to have water shipped in. Now, what does water shipped in mean? Oh, isn't it nice someone brings them water? No, there is a tank full of water. You might have seen, uh, you know, you can see these around here, someone riding a tank full of water, but that might be to fill a swimming pool or something else. This is a tank full of water that may arrive in their village at three o'clock in the morning, and they have to go down and get that water if they're going to have any water for the rest of the day. So you can see water is so important for survival, but there are uh, people throughout the world who don't have the luxury that we have of running water. And running water has existed on the planet since the time of the Romans and before. But not everyone has the luxury of having it because obviously the water in the time of the Romans is going to, uh, 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 the ability for it to be run, running, is going to have a lot to deal with not only their engineering, but also the basic way the, the earth is in their area so that they can engineer that water can roll downhill because it can't roll uphill or flow. So there are places, there are desert areas and and even mountain areas, and this was a mountainous area, where that's not possible. And so water has to be shipped in. So as you can see how intense water is, especially when you don't have it. Now, we can see a better example of this when we we see any coverage of Mars. And what are they looking for? They're looking for water. Why? Because that is the sign of life, at least from an earthly perspective. You know, as they say, well, if we find water, that is the sign of life. Well, yeah on Earth, that may not be the sign of life on Mars. We don't know that, and I'm sure they've thought that one through, but we don't know. But in any case, it is the assumption that if there's water, there is life, but that is an Earth-based assumption, but we won't go any further in there. So anyway, they're looking for water because that is the Earth-based assumption that that is the sign of life. So as you can see, any nation 
uh, for any nation, water is essential. And th- this is one of the reasons why it's so scary what's going on with the Colorado River out west. The Colorado River is, uh, is in a sense, getting so low. You could almost say in some areas it's almost drying up. Hopefully it's getting it's flowing more. But you can see how essential that is because the water of the Colorado River affects the entire Southern California Arizona and I believe New Mexico area. I mean, it's a it's a huge area it fa- it affects with electrical power and also water, and so water is an essential element to existence. So when we see this first reading, and people are reading us, and this water is just overflowing, especially in this dev- desert culture, this is something that's speaking wonderfully powerful news, and don't forget who they're speaking to. This is from the prophet Ezekiel. Now, earlier in Ezekiel, you see this tragic story of Ezekiel warning the people, if you do not change, then the Lord will have to change you. He's going to have to correct you. And that's putting it in a nice way because it was obviously a lot more stern. And at one point, the people, especially the priests at the time, these are the Levites, they are worshiping false gods. Remember, the worst sin in the Old Testament and the New Testament is idolatry. They are engaging in worshiping false gods in the temple, but hidden in like a, what we would call today a sacristy, hidden away in the temple and then going out and doing their liturgical service while not believing this at all and actually rooting themselves in worshiping these false gods. And Ezekiel is warned, if they don't change their way, then disaster will fall upon them. Disaster falls upon them And then what you see is after the Babylonian exile, yet again, we see water is going to flow out of the temple. That's so powerful because number one, the temple's rebuilt, but number two, water, it's there will be life here. God will bring life because that's what it means. Just as if... Think of it this way. Some scientist says to NASA, the Johnson Space Center, Center, you will find water and you're going to see water so much in abundance that you can build a colony on Mars. We'll just say hypothetical. Um, Well, once they hear those words, they will know there is great hope there. Well, that's what was going on in the time of Ezekiel. We'll uh, talk more on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Austin, Massachusetts, right here on WEZE. 590 AM, and you can also hear us at CatholicAudioMedia.com. That's CatholicAudioMedia.com. We'll be right back right after this. Have you ever wanted to read the Bible but didn't know which readings to check out? Well, how about looking at the church's daily readings? You can find them at the website of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Just go to Bible.com usccb.org and click on the date that pops up on that page. There are other options on that page as well. That is bible.usccb.org and click on the date and you will see the daily readings for your own prayer and study of the Bible. This is a prayerful tip from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out Catholic TV. Dot com. And don't forget our own website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. We're going to talk about more, more about that at the end of the show, but catholicaudiomedia.com. So anyway, we're talking about uh, this powerful message that comes from Ezekiel, similar to the message we heard yesterday from Isaiah. And now we hear this from Ezekiel, where God is promising this water. And think of it this way, that story I told you about what, what was going on in Ecuador. If all of a sudden people understood that coming out of the church, there would be this great flow of water um, that would be up to, uh, you know, up to your neck in water, the people would be excited because they would know that there would be life coming. Now, 
just for the just for the heck of it to have an understanding of how amazing this was and this really is something that we have to to reflect on on one side of the Daule River there were people that needed to go at three o'clock in the morning to get bottles of water so they would have enough water for the day on the other side of the Daule River, there were people that had swimming pools. Now, understand that great difference between the rich and the poor that was not on different sides of the tracks, but literally different sides of the Daule River. And you can see how amazing that reality is. But then you go to the next step. And who is Ezekiel speaking to? He's speaking to the people who are struggling the most, who are seeking to get relief from the Lord because the other people prior to the exile, the people who were busy worshiping false gods and everything, and I'm not speaking at all about the people of Ecuador at this time, but they would be the people who would be the richest and they would be the movers and shakers of the time. And they had rejected God and it, and because of their decisions, it affected so many. And so the, the Lord is always calling us to reach out to the poorest of the poor because they don't have access to many of the resources. And also to remember that the poorest of the poor, also the Lord is focusing on them because they're the ones that he has come to call people to serve because they don't have access to all the power that the people who are the movers and shakers have. And I mean, not God's power, but they have the political power and the whole bit. And that's just the way human structure is. If we eliminate God from the picture, it's going to become more stark. As a matter of fact, it happens all the time where you have the people, even if they use God, they don't necessarily believe in them, as, as I told you. And so they manipulate using God, but they do what benefits themselves. And that causes other people to be poor. And the Lord says, I'm going to be here for the poor. So when you get that message that there's going to be tremendous water, the ones who are going to be most excited, the ones who were without water. We'll talk more tomorrow. Have yourself a blessed day. You know, we have a website for our programs that will connect you to the parish, the blog, and to share your prayer requests with us. If you've been touched by our program, you can even show your support through your donation. We are at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's all one word, catholicaudiomedia.com. It is updated regularly with blog posts and podcasts of the program. So stay connected with us and tell us how this show has touched your heart, catholicaudiomedia.com. In Cristo vivimos.